Hello, and welcome to our Media Lab Hot Item. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Sebastian Becker, Policy Advisor at EDRI, the European Digital Rights Nonprofit. Sebastian is a human rights lawyer and works on online freedom of expression, including platform regulation and policies related to disinformation and surveillance advertising. The reason? A recent blog post by EDRI in which they share their concerns about the EMFA Article 17 media exemption. Let's hear what Sebastian has to say. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, for the opportunity to present Edri's concern on the European Media Freedom Act. Um, for those who are not familiar with our organization, Edri is the largest European digital rights network with more than 50 organizations across Europe, including organizations such as the Committee to Protect Journalists, Access Now, EFF, and Article 19. So just to recall, uh, on 7th of September, the Committee on Culture and Education voted its final opinion on the European Media Freedom Act. And our concerns and our um, aim in this regulation is to prevent an undue concentration of power by very large online platforms. So we see a problem in this regulation, specifically in Article 17, which has been already uh, debated a lot in this forum and others. And But just to recall, what is this Article 17? This is a, well, a specific rule that will uh, regulate the relationship between media service providers and very large online platforms. And the cold committee adopted a 24 hours must carry obligation for media content. So what does mean? What does this mean? Um, this is an obligation for very large online platforms to make visible media content within 24 hours. So in, in a nutshell, this would be an exception for content moderation policies of very large online platforms. This is problematic in our view. Uh, we believe that the called committee is missing here the bigger picture. The nature of media service providers does not prevent them from publishing this information, propaganda, or harmful content. So this rule of 24-hour must carry obligation could open the door to malicious actors that may disseminate this information. The aim of this uh, article is to solve a problem between media service providers and very large online platforms. But this obligation neither address the problem nor uh, solve it. Because here the problem is that online platforms are bottlenecks for the distribution of media content. Therefore, this article will not solve this structural uh, problem between these two actors. On top of that, we have to recall to the audience that this was discussed and rejected by the European Parliament under the DSA debate. And this, I mean, basically this uh, rule creates an exception of a specific actors on how content moderation rules work in the DSA. So this uh, article does not follow the DSA logics and rules that are already approved uh, in this uh, horizontal regulation. So how can we solve this problem? Uh, we are putting forward a proposal to eliminate this 24-hour mass carry obligation. We need to bring Article 17 into line with the TSA. That means no exceptions, no ex ante assessment, no special treatment for special actors. So why is that? It's because this leaves the door open for other actors to advocate for exceptions on content moderation policies. 
we can imagine therefore in the future that unions for instance or even governmental bodies will claim an exception of content moderation policies in very large online platforms and that of course will entail more disinformation more propaganda content and perhaps more harmful content we also are putting forward uh, to clarify specific concepts and bringing them into line with the TSA. We have on one side, for instance, amical solutions in this Article 17 that seems to be another channel different from the TSA alternative dispute resolutions. So we are with this um, concept of amical solution fragmentating the way how we are going to solve the problem of content moderation policies within very large online uh, platforms. On top of that, for instance, the, um, the cult committee proposed to include the word restrictions of media content that could jeopardize efforts that fight against disinformation. For instance, with this uh, open scope of what should be suspended or restricted in this case, uh, measures such as down ranking, labeling of content, or diluting visibility of media uh, content will not be uh, possible or could be challenged by these uh, media service providers. So if the aim of the European Parliament and specifically the uh, cult committee is to solve the problem between very large online platforms and media service providers, a 24-hour must carry obligation would not be the solution. We can, instead of that, we are proposing here, and this is a Article 19 uh, original propose, um, proposal, that we should open the market of recommender systems for third actors that can include the, the way how uh, media content should be presented in online spaces. If we open the market of recommender systems, we could stimulate a more diverse and more brutal um, landscape in online uh, platforms. So that with that, we will empower users to make sure that uh, media content will be uh, presented at the end of the day for end users. Uh, just to finalize uh, this statement or this presentation, I would say like um, Edry is not alone on this. There's a lot of academics, fact checkers, organizations, and even independent publishers who have declared similar positions on, on this, on Article 17, um, but based on different reasons. But we are saying here that it's something not only for digital rights concerns, but also by, uh, you know, academics who are um, fostering freedom of expression in online context, fact checkers and publishers that want to um, keep developing a market in this context. So that's it, I think. Um, thank you, Sebastian. I think you, you've You've highlighted the, the the fact that at the end of the day, it's it's a provision with good intentions, uh, but when you provide a solution, you should define the problem and you should then address that problem. And in this case, the solution that's been provided is not addressing what is um, put forward as a problem, which is, as you said, um, uh, difficult relationships between large online platforms and media providers. But in a context where Europe has stated that it wants to fight against disinformation and where it has also uh, adopted the DSA to make sure that content moderation is done in a certain way and is done in an objective way. So let's hope that after this cult vote, there's still a plenary vote coming up. Let's hope that the European Parliament maybe rectifies some of the excesses that come out of this cult report so that it is um, you know, the end result is both good for media, media plurality, access to media, but is also something that makes sense from a freedom of speech uh, perspective and makes sense in the fight against disinformation. 
Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for Edry for the work. And let's hope that Article 19 solution is something that enters into consideration. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you uh, to you to have the opportunity to present our concerns here.